where is it? Have we done this before? <laughs> are we recording now? I believe we are. Yes, sir. I hope, I hope everybody watched the best of last week. Right? Wednesday and Friday. Pick out your favorite show. I apologize. Yeah. Melinda wanted to go Wednesday. I could, didn't know how to record on the road. And then Friday, we spent an extra day in Hilton Head and... How dare you enjoy your time off? How dare you with your family? It would have been nice if I was comfortable with recording. And, re you know, last time we tried to record on an iPhone product, we didn't have any audio. And I went into a black hole for, what, six weeks before we tried yes. again? <laughs> we can't do that again. Let's just take the time off. I was like, I'm, uh, <laughs> I can't take it if we do record another show. I mean, it's, it's you know, there's... Was, I was depressed. I went to a spiral depression over that recording. Well, I, I can hear you, but I think the funny thing is neither you or I love technology that much. So when something goes down, we're both like, what do we do? I mean, I put out a call. I had a, I had a need for somebody to interface one piece of software with another piece of software for business, yeah. you know, to get my Amazon That's production. They had a little app that allows you to do, you know, roll in B-roll and roll in, you know, camera angles and then you could tie that in with amazon live so where i'm nice. selling stuff i mean that's yeah, my that's business nice. and i was like i don't know how i can i can't i'm unable to merge these two pieces of software and i watched the guy do it on youtube yeah. and he left out the, the key element of actually linking the software pieces together wow. he goes this is great for amazon live and then boom and then it happens well you, you can't yada 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 the boom part yeah YouTube has saved my life. The YouTube videos have saved my life on a lot of things that I cannot figure out. Like even this morning, I upgraded because we're home so much. I upgraded. I don't have cable. So I upgraded my Hulu to Hulu plus live TV. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I'm digging and I'm digging. I'm like, why can't I figure? It should be easy. It may, I start panicking and thinking, is this my old age? And I can no longer function electronically. So I watched a YouTube video and I was like, yes, did that. Yes, did that. Here's who's the, what the kicker is. On my screen, I have my screen very bright so I can see things. The, the little knob that was in the box, I couldn't see it because my screen was so bright. So once I watched the video, I was like, oh, it kind of is an old age thing because I have the light up a lot more. The letters are this big on your iPhone. <laughs> Here's the thing though. I don't do the big letters, and I'll tell you why. The little trick is I told you, I wear a contact in only one eye. So with my old eyes, I can see things close up with my left eye, but with my right eye, I see distance, and your brain just figures it out. So I can see close up and far away. Otherwise, I would be getting the readers and stuff. Nice. Well, that's great. So how much is it, does it cost to go Hulu and live TV? Um, if I do Hulu with no ads, which I prefer to do Hulu with no ads, it's a little bit more. It's like 60 bucks a month. I mean, that's the TV and the Hulu. Yeah. No How much was it without the TV? Um, when I was just doing Hulu with no ads, it was like eleven ninety nine. So you added TV for 50 bucks. Yeah, basically. All right. Well, I'm just going to get the number. Yeah. But and I don't, I don't think it's that bad. I have, I got rid of cable a long time ago. I thought it was too expensive. And the great thing about Hulu is you can cancel anytime. You can pause it. You know, they're working with people. But we're home so damn much that we need, we need more murder shows. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we get into our topics. Yes. We've got, why is Davis here so early? I told him 2.15. He does not follow up. Ignore him. That he son does of a bitch. He wants. He's not your boss. Well, I see him sitting there. What happened to 215, Davis? I clicked on the button at the wrong time. I was, I. This is yeah. what's wrong with America today. People do not follow directions. Premature eclipulation. That's exactly right. I don't even have my camera up. Oh, God. I, I am not ready. I, I, I am not ready. Pipe down while Melinda and I chit chat. We'll wait till we see your. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay. I'll, I'll sit quietly. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So, uh, so you're spending. 50 bucks for live TV. Yes. I, now, I just got Spectrum to get my internet, and they yeah. charged me 90 but that's internet and live TV. How much do you pay for your internet? Uh, I know the answer to this. I know it. Uh, it's through Verizon. My internet is like, I think, $72. So you're over 120 bucks now. 
listen, dude, take my money. Take my money. Everybody does the same calculation. We all want to abandon cable because it was $120. Now. But cable ties you into a contract and all that other bullshit. And I've had bad experiences with cable. And I feel like I like this whole do-it-yourself. Like, I'll pick streaming. And I'll probably oh. do live TV during the winter. I've done the same thing. I just bought live TV because if you want to watch football, it's on CBS or Fox. Oh, and yes, I got to watch my football because isn't it fantasy yeah. football time? It's time yeah. for fantasy football. You I and, I, one you game and that... I, talked, you know, I have talked about this, that we, uh, I want to do a dating app like fantasy football, but for dating. Really? So you just, you bid up the daters or you get, you get to pick the dating from the. Well, I don't know how fantasy football works. So someone would have to talk me through it. <laughs> I'd be happy. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's do our, let's do the Davis game. This is way better than what I've got. I'm just saying, I, that's why I called in early. I just want to be part of the team. You guys are, you guys are in fuego. And then you got- better ask me something I know this time because I am on a <laughs> losing streak and I'm fucking sick and tired of it. Wow. This is about Hang writers on. and uh, books on, about hold on. feelings. Let me, hold on. <laughs> let, me, let, let me introduce Matt. Matt comes in every now and again if you're new to the show. I don't oh, have a giant any- head. It's a giant head. It asks us questions re- with regard to the movies. There it is. We haven't even introduced ourselves, Tom. Well, my name's Tom Wise. I'm Melinda McKenzie. And I like books about feelings. <laughs> I got you pegged, don't I? All right, here's what we're doing. We're talking about, you know, by the way, we did have one, uh, somebody who actually watches the show, uh, uh, actually commented and accused me of, of having the wrong year of a movie. And I just want to say Galen. that in the, the way the Academy Awards work is Galen. when you have the, the ceremony, it happens usually in March or April, for the previous year. So get off my back. Our Jack. viewers care about oh, the truth. Technology, yes, I know. Well, no, let's talk not. about 1981 because that was the year I graduated high school. And, okay. Uh, and uh, w- w- it was a good year. It was a good year for me. Uh, we're talking about highest grossing films of 1981, my friends. 1981. Now, okay. we're going to do this a little different because one of the the highest grossing film of 1981 was so obvious that i'm going to throw it out right away the highest grossing film of 1981 anybody want to take a guess Your memories? i was in la doing cocaine i doubt that i know the answer to that. <laughs> la's fine okay it was uh, i'm gonna <laughs> I say was it, not focused on films that's why you're just now getting a hold of your feelings because all those <laughs> rails you blew all right, so wow. 1981 Raiders of the Lost Ark came oh, out, which just clearly was number one. Okay. It grossed $212 million. Harrison Ford, wow. a guy named Spellberg, I think it is. That's $81, too. 1981. That was a huge, right? Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Did you see the movie in the theaters? Of course. Of course. I did, actually. You think you did, Melinda. You're I not have sure. a memory of it. Yeah. It was that, or if it was you were sitting in a park somewhere. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's okay. It. So here's the question that's on your on on your my mind is who was number two? Number one is good, but once in a while, number two is important. Okay. Like so your last. who who was number two in 1981? Was it A on Golden Pond? Yeah. On cool. Golden Pond. You remember that one? Yeah. Uh, I, I will give you a hint. On Golden Pond had won three Oscars that year. Yeah. For actor, Henry Fonda, best actress, Catherine Hepburn, and best screenplay. So on Golden Pond. B, Chariots of Fire won four Oscars that year. Uh, I do remember, I believe I saw that in the theaters as well. Uh, it won best picture, best screenplay, and best score by. Ba, 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 ba. By? By. The best score was by? Vangelis. That's correct. Vangelis. Yes. Remember yes. Vangelis? Yeah. Yes. Chariots of Fire. So on Golden Pond, Chariots of Fire, or C, Superman 2, which was, by the way, filmed at the exact same time they filmed Superman 1. They knew it was going to be a hit. Christopher Reeves, they, they filmed them both at the same time. That's kind of an in- interesting trivia. Uh, featuring Mr. Gene Hackman who I love, uh, Christopher Reeve, and Margot Kidder. Wow. 
Uh, my career has gone about the same way Margot Kidder's career has gone. Yeah, what happened to Margot? Uh, I understood why she got that part, though, quite honestly. She wasn't quite the ingenue. Like, they, could, they needed someone more innocent. Yes, Please. that's a good point. So that's Superman 2. Point. So <laughs> on Golden Pond, Chariots of Fire, Superman 2. You and want to Tom, do you want to break it down, and then we'll let no, Melinda, Melinda go break first. Melinda go no, first. I'm the feelings girl. You break it down. Well, I was, I was getting, but uh, you want, but I'm gonna, you're gonna go first, all right? As I'll defer. Yes, to you to I first. will guess first. On Golden Pond, Chariots of Fire. He's angry. It's not about Superman folks. Two. All right. On Golden Pond, Chariots of Fire, Superman Two. So Superman Two is gonna probably be huge because. They knew already it was going to be a big – they had never done anything like this before. It was huge. I mean, there's no question. It was going to be huge. And so they get a, uh, a, uh, they get a, a cornerstone of acting, Gene Hackman, to come in and play the, the bad guy. Exactly. So it's, it, that's a solid blockbuster that's going to appeal to a lot of people. Now we've got On Golden Pond. Forget about the kids. Nobody's interested in this movie. <laughs> This is not I, a blockbuster. I, I watched it and cried like a baby when I was a. It's very think, depressing. Yeah, no. I think I saw. I think I saw this at the movies as well. Uh, I'd be surprised. And then, and then you've got *Chariots of Fire*, which I don't believe I've ever seen. I know the ra- I know the item. I know the, the the theme. There's you know like racing in Britain in 1943 or 52 or whatever. That actually, was. It was a documentary. It's actually a true story. All right. Yeah. So. Superman, clearly. It's number one. That's going to be the second half. On Golden Pond will be two, and Chariots of Fire will be three. That, now, this, these are Unless my opinions. Unless he's trying to mislead you. No, no. Well, these are my opinions. <laughs> well, Melinda gets, but the, Melinda gets the first choice. I'm, not, I'm saying that there's no way you've got the uh, 35 uh, and older group is going to be able to generate enough heat for any one of those other two movies. It's not for kids. I hear what you're saying, and of course, here's what, where I disagree. So um, if this is going to be a test about humanity, if Ooh. humans are good and invested and smart, it would be Chariots of Fire because of what the story was about and it was very important and it had a great musical score and everybody did talk about it, whether they saw it or not. Everybody did talk about it. On Golden Pond was a bummer. I think it was a date movie, but it was still a bummer movie. Well, it was a chance for Jane Fonda and Henry Fonda to act together too, right? Exactly. Yeah, it was a vehicle. It yeah, was a vehicle. I still totally, totally get that. And you know, all the Superman, the Marvel stuff, like I just don't get it. So I, I, I'm hey, going to do what- um DC. Um, uh, is it, is it, uh, Bill Murray does, didn't see it, so I'm not going to count it. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I'm going to say, I'm going to say, if it's Chariots of Fire, which is my guess, then the, then human beings in the world are better than what I think. If it's Golden Pond, we're all doomed and we're all going to hell. (laughs) You don't think that on Golden Pond strikes a chord in the fact that kind of, uh, it looks at the relationship between daughters and their dads? Come on. Nobody wants to see that. Are you going to have sex on a date if you go see on Golden Pond? Right. No. I'm just saying. I don't That's- think any any one of these three would be a good, good outcome. Well, I mean. Superman 2, maybe. Yeah, Superman. I, I do own the cape. I own the cape. See, there you go. So you could do the whole role-playing thing. Saturday night, the best seven minutes of the week. You can role-play Cherry the Fire as well. Just think about Ooh. that. There's some she runs and I chase her. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm doing the jokes. Oh, I'm going to say, you're going to feel really jacked up after Chariots of Fire. And even though Tom didn't see it, I'm going to say it was number two. So that's, you're saying number, Chariots of Fire was number two. I'm yes. going to clearly go, Chariots of, do you have the, the box office for the, you probably have the box office for the, everybody, right? Yes, yes I did. Chari- yeah. Neither Chariots of Fire or On Golden Pond broke a hundred million. I'd be surprised if they broke 50. And I will say that Superman 2 did $125 million at the box office. Lock it down. Okay. Wow. Bet the farm. So, so Melinda, you're on uh, – you're, um, to review, what, <laughs> which one are you picking? It's hard to tell with my answer. I, th- I thought it was just me. <laughs> Maybe that's the new strategy, right? I said that. Let's confuse them. Go to the tape. I'm saying – 
that it better be chariots of fire or we're doomed. If all it's right. golden pond, we're all going to hell. <laughs> chariots of fire. So Melinda has chariots of fire. Tommy, you've got Superman too. I want to I want to start out by saying, Tom, you guessed what was the dollar amount you said for Superman two? One twenty five, I believe. Uncanny. There's canny and then there's uncanny. You look this up. I looked it all up. Of course, I had to look it all up. Uh, Superman 2 actually did $108 million. Okay, call yeah, me a liar. Okay. Uh, and Superman 2 is the is an incorrect answer. That is the third highest. Uh, Superman 2 is the third highest. Chariots of Fire did... $48 that million. $59 million. I said $50 million. So the winner was this number two box office in 1981 was On Golden Pond. $119 million. Wow. Well, you know, it had two, it had, you know, Henry Fonda, his last argument. Every old person had to go see it, right? Last chance to see Henry Fonda before he shuffled off this mortal coil. See, I read books too, Melinda. Shuffled off this Pretty impressive. I buy them, I don't read them. I, I, oh my God. That just blows my mind because I guess what? I was thinking, you know how the 80s was, guys. No one was really that serious about anything. We wore neon what? clothes and everybody was doing coke. Why would anybody have <laughs> this golden pond? That was just you. Everybody, <laughs> everybody in my world was doing Raiders of the Lost Ark was number one. So think about that action, right? Number two yeah. on Golden Pond. Wow. You know what? It was, it was Yin and Yang. Yeah. yeah. So. You're clearly right. It's the sentimental thing about Henry because everybody yeah. pretty much knew what was going on there. And, and he won. He won Best Actor. I think about it. He was. I don't know how old he was. 140 something. Yeah, 146. He won Best Actor. She, Catherine Hepburn, was no spring chicken. Nope. She's no. Amazing. No. It was good to see those. I mean, when was the last? When was the last movie that you saw Henry Fonda in that was box office? Was it Mr. Roberts in 1966? Wow. Or I'm was it Catherine Hepburn in the in uh, yeah. in uh, the, the the you know the boat with him and the, her and uh, Humphrey Bogart going down the <laughs> river in a boat? Was Henry Fonda in the Grapes of Wrath? Yes. Yes. But he was, was a young man then. That's a book I actually did read. That's a great. Book. But would great that book. did that win mm -hmm. awards? Who knows? Yes, Grapes of Wrath won Best Picture. Yes, Galen. She'll, no. she'll as far as you know, I, I have no idea. We'll find out though in the comment section of this I video. Guess. I predicted the end of the world if if it was on Golden Pond. So it's now happening it's right up. now. It's happening. Twenty twenty. Right it's all because of that. It's all. It's all wow. follows. So uh, basically, Superman two uh, was third. I so neither one of you get a point. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, right? but thank you for playing our game. But uh, that was, was right, the first was, time you're both wrong. That's true. And but. I was I close with the box office on you were two very out of close. three? That was impressive. And think about Raiders of the Lost Ark, two hundred twelve million on Golden Pond, one nineteen. Yeah, it's not it, even close. Yeah. That's Plus, why I threw it out. It was crazy. No, I appreciate that. I, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I if you if you sat and thought about it a little bit, I wonder if Raiders took away from Superman at at all. Mm. Probably. Action match. You know, Good but point. I mean, if it's a long summer and one was released in June and one was released in, in August, then you know. Whatever, I don't know when really? they were released. If they were released at the same time, then yes, it would take away. But if they're released three weeks to four weeks difference, then maybe not. All right. right. Well, well, running the risk of uh, never coming back again, I just want to say, Melinda, I like your monkey. If I'm allowed out. to say, you it, are out. oh god, oh god. Like that's All the right. third time someone told me they like my monkey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you and what army? All right. Thank bye. you, sir. Well done. Thank you. Bye bye. Matt Davis, everybody. <laughs> bye, <Matt> team. <laughs> yourself out wow okay. it was a shocker well he always does he comes up with the interesting ones right the ones you're not going to expect and that's so that's what makes it interesting i would love to know since you came back on vacation what are your topics do you have topics i do <gasps> what are they oh look at you with your paper six decisions Ooh. unoffendable What's her version? Gosh, I've got a topic here. I forget what it, I forget what the, the theme was. I I outboxed myself with a, okay, a topic of old technology. I don't know what I'm thinking about. 
It'll and come to you. Bride and master. Bride? Bride and master. And master. Okay. What do you All mean? right. Um, I'll read you mine and then we'll do one of yours. All right. I've got online shopping fail. Mm -hmm. Reality check. Behind the scenes, because people love it. I actually got comments, personal comments, at people asking me who I was talking about last time. <laughs> uh, tip of the day, uh, sexy talk and canceled. Wow. I haven't talked to you for a while, so I got a lot going on. <laughs> All right. I want to hear her version from you. What's her version? You know what? It's always like, here's a con the conversation is you're hearing one side of the conversation. Yes. Like from a guy. And then that, that bitch, blah, 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 yes. blah. And I always think in the back of my mind, I wonder what, if, if she had to give her version of what happened. Yeah. He came in thinking he was boozed up. He was drunk, you know, sits on the yeah. couch and yells, what's for dinner? His version is I walk in, I say, Hey baby, you know, something smells good. What do you got cooking? So his version and her version are completely different i always I, I i always think that's a very good that's a very good way to not i don't know disarm is nothing but but have the other person think about well if she was telling me the story what would her version be and yes. can you try to get in her or his shoes and see their version of what was going on when you're having a conflict that reminds me you know when you and i've talked about that video where the the guy and the girl are each separately talked to their friends about the night before right and the guy's like, it was great. We barely talked. She fixed me dinner. Well, we had sex in the kitchen and I passed out. It was the best night ever. And she's like, it was terrible. I worked so hard. I fixed him dinner. He wouldn't even speak to me. I just ended up just having sex in the kitchen, hopefully to get his attention. And then he fell asleep. And her version was terrible. And his was like, I have the best girlfriend ever. My God. <laughs> statue. It's so funny. It's so real, though. Yes, it's a weak. It's a weak topic, but I, I, it just rolled through my head the other day. I wonder what her version would be of that. It's, Tom, did you see the the show called The Affair? Um, I think it was on Showtime, and they the whole premise of the show was based on his version and her version. You know, I think we talked about this a long time ago. I don't think it was we were on the podcast when we did it, but it's called The Affair. Are you the sure affair. it was Showtime? Yes, and I believe it was Showtime. Fantastic, because they would do things like in her version, they'd be at the beach, and she would think she was being very demure and um, careful with him and not too flirty. And in his version, the wind blew up her skirt. She looked over her shoulder. And it's a very interesting uh, perspective to see why things happened in their life right. the way they did, because they had totally different versions. So it's a yeah. great topic. Yeah, I mean, I remember having a conversation with a female friend of mine who was uh, invited to be on a uh, on a float at the uh, Gasparilla Parade, right? Okay. So yeah. these guys are these guys are usually parts of clubs or whatever, and you know, just not everybody can go on the float. You have to be invited. This and this and then this. So she went with him, and then oh, and then I met this guy, and we were chatting a little bit. Blah 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 blah. I'm like, so you're with A, and you're chatting up B. I mean, very attractive woman. It's like no one's gonna not see you chatting up B when you're with A. And so A was, you know, in her mind, unduly upset. I'm saying, what do you think his version was? He brought you on the float and you're chatting some other strange guy that you just met up? Not, yeah. not a friend of mine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't clear to her that that was maybe more than just an invitation on the float, right? Yeah. Well, no, it was, it was, it was a date, but she was like, she thought she was a free agent because, you know, whatever. She's on the, she's on the boat and some guy's yeah. giving her attention. It's like. That's a flag, dear. You're you're yeah. violating a you know. You know you can't you can't you're embarrassing yeah. the guy by talking to to B. Right. You know, it's not like it, this B is his friend. I agree. You know, A's over here at this part of the boat. You're at B and you're having a, you're meeting at the at the you know at the cooler having a drink with B. It's like you get Once to say hi hi for six seconds or whatever whatever yeah. whatever you say can't sit there. Yeah. Once you said that to her, did she pick up on it or was she just in denial about it? Um, yeah, then justification of this, ah. that, and the other, but it's like, then she, you know, I, I mean, I, she, you know, we're friends and yeah, I was like, no, that's not cool. She's trying to get me to sign off on it. Right. I go, no, I'm not buying it. 
we feel better about our bad choices if we can get one of our friends to sign off right. on. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, and we're still great friends, absolutely. Yeah. But it's like, you know what? I, you know, from a man's point of view, I would feel, yeah. I would feel uh, a little bit, uh, you know, cuckled by that. Yes. You're using me as your ticket to, to the ride, and now you're seeing yes. you're looking for the men. Yes. And this is such a great example of why friendships, real friendships, are so important. Because a real friend would be honest and say that. A superficial friend would go, "Fuck that guy! Come on, man! You're on! You're on the on the flow! You're in a parade!" It's funny because I had the same conversation. I was at Hilton Head this weekend with my brother, and oh, dropping so, the vacation names. I'm at the Hilton Head. Oh, well, ho, ho. <laughs> someone's got money. It's not me, that's for sure. This thing was very expensive. So she called me, same friend. This is years later. We we talk. We still talk. And she just broke up with this guy she was seeing. And she described what was happening. This was not part of my, she said, he said, uh -huh. but they were all, they were on a date. They meet one of his friends. He's with a woman. They all sit down having coffee. Yes. He, the B, the friend gets up to go somewhere to go to the bathroom or something. Yes. Her date starts chatting up the woman who's younger, very attractive, this, that, and the other. And, you know, it's like, she's like, huh, I'm picking up a strange vibe here that's going on between my date and this woman. And yeah. he, he even asks the woman, oh, what's your relationship with, with B? Oh, you know, we're friends. We've just been going out. Oh, really? Have you ever been intimate? I'm like, you can't, you can't ask that question. You can't ask that question. That's so, super bold. Yeah. So they did break up. That day, I said, well, I'm on, I'm on board with you here. That guy was completely off base. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's creepy. I, I should always check with you when I date people because I find out later after I break up with them, everybody's like, oh, we never liked that guy. Maybe you could have mentioned something to me because that would be very helpful. He I brought might bacon to the brunch. He baked <laughs> two pounds of bacon. Okay. That's going to buy a lot of goodwill with me. So then nothing else mattered after that. Because he I've was been the paid off. Guy. I've been paid off. So I'm like I'm like Ted Cruz. Yeah, you I'm are getting, like Ted Cruz. I'm getting paid you have off. now at all your branches. <laughs> well, I'm glad he was good for something. So that's good news. Amen to that. Yes. We're, we're referring to a boyfriend that Melinda brought to a brunch. Yes. Who turned out to be a it, not a fun guy. And yes. but he did bring bacon to the brunch. Yes. Oh, it started a tradition. I started making bacon. Sure. I bake four pounds of bacon now for brunch. Yeah, no, I mean, you got to you got to take what you can get. So that was that was good for you. I baked four pounds of bacon yesterday, as a matter of fact. For? For just me to put on my sandwiches. That'll last me a month. I'll stick it in the fridge and just pick at it all month long. Yeah. So I still miss the brunches, that's for sure. Yeah, no, the brunches are fun. As soon as the pandemic's over, I'm, I, I want to come back. I love your brunches. I love them. Yes. But, Thing of the past. Which which one of the topics do we have any time to even talk anymore? Well, Probably we got not. Time for one of your topics. One. Which one? Uh, something something short pull on. What was the first one? Uh, online shopping fail. Online shopping fail. <laughs> reality check. Behind the scenes. Tip of the day. Sex talk and cancel. Yes. Well, we love behind the scenes, but we do that all the time. Reality check. What do you want to? Use? Which one do you want to do? Reality um, check or behind the scenes? It's totally fine. It's totally fine. Let's so here's it. the reality check. Um, have you in your lifetime been treated specifically different because of your age? Have you ever had that where you're like, oh wait a minute, oh this is because you think? Have you had that happen? Well. Um... Okay, people are going to profile regardless. It's like I don't get yes. carded anymore when I'm going to a bar. I don't get carded at a liquor store. I mean, that's people are treating me differently because of my age because of that. Um, it's interesting. I do tend to hang out with comics before the COVID thing, you know, open yes. mics or whatever. And those guys are in their 20s and 30s. There's really not anybody in their 40s or 50s unless they're actually doing professional comedy. Nobody's yes. open micing. Generally, maybe there's one. Clark Book Brooks is probably around my age, but he's but uh, so you do feel that you want to be part of the group, but you're also literally old enough to be their dad. Yeah. I mean, I've got a 40 year old daughter. <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't believe I've ever been 
negatively chosen because of that. Although, I mean, just like, you know, occasionally I'll audition for something, but you're in the wrong age range. You know, you're not yeah. blah, blah, blah anymore. And that's, I get that. That's, you know, we're looking for a 28 year old, blah, blah, blah. I'm clearly not going to be that, but I don't ever feel I've ever been discriminated at against because of my age. Not, not in a way that would be like, well, that's not fair. You can't just make right. all those assumptions that I can't lift 68 pounds or blah, blah, blah. Right. Blah, blah. Right. Well, I, I don't know that I, here, here's what I wanted to talk about. So I've, yeah. I've mentioned many times, like the but younger guy. Can I say something? Yes. When, when you put out the topic, I think my job is trying to figure out where you were going with it. I know. I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing paint everywhere. <laughs> I know. Cause <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Something's going to stick, right? Something's yeah. going to stick. I mean, I mentioned several times that, um, you know, I'm 59 now, so what? I'll be 60 in January. And before, when I was dating a lot, the younger guys would always come for me and their, and their one gift to me was, but I'm so young. Like, oh, but I'm so young, you know, that I'm supposed to value that, which, excuse me, sir, you have no control over your age. You have control over your behavior. Right. You but it's still something. Is it though? Well, twenty eight's better than eighty eight. Well, I feel like it's not really a gift you're giving me if it's something that you don't have control over. You can't control oh, for twenty four right. or thirty. Right. And a lot of the 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 times, you know, like I I very clearly had guys in their thirties going, but I'm thirty three. But hey, well. Even if you were my age, I wouldn't be interested. So just because you're 33, you know what right. I'm saying? Well, I mean, women always have youth as a as a trading card, as a value. So because women have used their youth as a value, then I have to be punished? You do not. I'm just saying it's not outrageous. I'm not arguing with you, but it's not outrageous for some 28-year-old guy saying, what are you rejecting me for? I'm 28. You should be tripping over your, your apron to get to me. <laughs> You should be tripping over your old uterus trying to get, <laughs> trying to get to me. Well, so I had a real life situation happen to me because of my age. I had gone to the eye doctor and all I was doing was renewing my uh, uh, prescription and I was getting some cool glasses and some contacts. It was a very young girl. I don't know how young. They all look very young to me now. She looked like she was 12. She was probably in her 20s. I met some guy kids yesterday. Uh, I pegged him at 14. He's going in the Navy next week. <laughs> older you get, the younger everybody does appear to be. So this, this young girl was talking to me like this. Hello. Asking questions like this because she saw my age. And just real quickly talking about getting carded. Do you know, as a woman, when you get carded, like at a liquor store or whatever, I put my thumb over my address because I'm always worried, they're worried that they're asking me so they can you know what I mean? Like, that's a concern. I never thought about that, but I can see that to be a concern. Absolutely. As a woman, some creepo at the liquor store can say he can legitimately ask you, and then he knows your address. Right. So, anyway. so, um, so I'm is, that, is that today's tip of the day? Um, cover your address when you're no, at but No, if you're working at a store. Oh. <laughs> and that's Just today's part. tip of the day. The tip of the day. So this this eye doctor was asking me, like, oh. you know, mm -hmm. oh, is it, are we done? Nope, got a few oh. minutes. Just real quickly. So she was saying, you oh, know, no. talking to me time. like this. Sing songy, and, yeah. And just very, can you and have you? And she's like, well, do you have any floaters? And I said, I, I don't, what is that? And so she described that floaters are these things that you get, right? And you can see them. And I said, well, no, I guess not. And she's like, well, you probably have them. You probably just don't recognize them. And I'm just like, why did I lie to my eye doctor? It's an important visit. I'm not going to lie. And I just, the whole visit, she was very nice, but it, very condescending and very like, listen, Nana, I'm sure you have all these problems. I'm going to fix them for you because I'm very young. It's the first time in my life I ever felt very like, kind of put in a box because of my age. And I thought, is this, my God, I am not looking forward. You know what I mean? To that kind of condensation. You know what? And if you were 86, she would have thought you were wonderful. You would have thought she was wonderful. Yes. Yeah. I'm in the creepy age category where I'm not adorable yet. 
I'm just sad. <laughs> it really offended. I was very offended. I didn't say anything to her because I get what she's doing. She's being helpful, but it did hurt my feelings a lot because she negated what I said. Maybe she thought I had Alzheimer's and didn't remember that I had floaters. So she just told me I, I do. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> so you know, I've, you know, I've run across recently is when someone asks you a question and you answer the question without any vagueness, they're like, huh, really? And then they circle back and ask the question again. <laughs> that was pretty clear the first time. I mean, I don't want to argue. And, you know, <laughs> because I didn't say what they thought I was going to say. Yes. Uh, yes. I'll get that as well. Because even though I'm what people consider older, I do try to be very aware of myself and the world. And so I, I try to be real um, um, observant and clear about what I think. And it's not necessarily based on my age so much as it's based on what I'm trying to be aware of in the world. So I've gotten some pushback from, you know, younger people going, oh, that's so interesting. You'd feel that way. Why? Because you think I'm a thousand years old and old people just stop thinking? 59 is not that old. Look, we're about to, uh, our next president's going to be closing in on 80, regardless of who wins. Yeah. So anyway, that's the first time in my life I ever had that happen. It was, it was hard to take it, and, and it hit me and it bothered me for a couple of days. I felt very like, wow, this is, wow. this is not a happy feeling. See my second topic, which was unoffendable. <laughs> we'll have to do that. We'll have to do that on the next segment yes. then. Yes. Yes, dear. All right. Well, okay. there we go. I apologize for missing two shows. I hope you went back and you know, watch something else. Sorry for the, <laughs> it was on, we knew I, 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 Melinda and I decided before we, I left on Tuesday that if I could possibly do something on Wednesday, I was up for it. I did. I was unsure with the technology. Then I rolled into another day, turned into Friday. Yeah. We apologize. That's all I'm saying now. I'm done. Yeah. You don't, you don't owe anybody anything by yeah. God. Thanks for uh, watching, uh, unpacking some shit with Wise and McKinsey. My name's Tom Wise. I'm Melinda McKinsey. And then we'll see you, uh, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you.